Hello and welcome. I'm Maria Ressa. This is Talk Thursday. We are at the Asian Development Bank in Manila, sitting with Steve Groff, so Vice President for ADB. Steve, thank you for having us. Thank you, Maria. Um, tell me what. Tell me what you found what, on your work on HIV here in the Philippines. Well, what we found is, and we rely on our work that we do with UNAIDS and other other partners who are, who are who are focused on this work is that, that the Philippines is one of nine countries in the world where we've seen an increase in, in HIV incidence um, over the last 10 years. I mean, the good news is that worldwide we've seen a decrease right. in incidence, but there are nine countries in, in, in the world that have seen an increase in incidence, and the Philippines is one of those nine countries. Why is the Philippines bucking the global trend? Well, um, we're not really sure why, but we have seen some trends that are, that are worrisome. First, we're seeing an increase in, in incidence of, of HIV uh, among men who have sex with men. We're seeing an increase in incidence among uh, injecting drug users. And we're seeing an increase in incidence among uh, uh, people who have sex with commercial sex workers or unprotected sex with commercial sex, worker, sex workers. Um, so among, among these three, one of the more disturbing parts of this trend is the fact that we're seeing very large increases in incidence among injecting drug users. In Cebu, as an example, um, we've seen an increase from 1% incidence among injecting drug users in Cebu, 1% being, being HIV positive mm -hmm. in 2009 to over 50% testing positive in 2011. And what's being done about this? Well, part of it is the, you know, the, the Philippine government is, is, is obviously taking this seriously, okay. um, but the ADB just the other day announced a, a project that we are working together with the World Bank and uh, the Philippines Department of Health on, on addressing some of these challenges. And part of it is going to be information, making sure that information is available, making sure that, that people have the knowledge and, and understanding that they need. Mm -hmm. Another part of it is engaging communities and making sure that communities have um, that there's outreach to communities, the communities are engaged in, 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 in addressing these challenges. And lastly, it's tr looking at what are some cost-effective solutions that we might be able to, to employ to address the specific populations that are most at risk. In, in, in two of the three that you mentioned, the increase of um, sex, men with men and the commercial sex workers, we're talking here about unprotected sex. Yes. And when you talk about education, is this condom usage? I mean, how, how, what exactly is the work being done with, with these groups? Well, it, 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 it crosses a whole lot of different areas. Um, I think first is just you know, having information available about what your options are right. um, and making sure that people do know what the, what the risks are. I think that there has been, um, there, we, we don't want to see any kind of, of complacency amongst people who are choosing that, that kind of, uh, making those kinds of choices. Right. And so ha making sure that they have information available about what the risks are is critically important. How would you gauge the, the level of education in, in that? Uh, in the Philippines too? Well, it's, it's sort of hard to make that kind of assessment. I think that one thing that we, one question we get often is, is what, what kind of stigma is attached to, to, to HIV, HIV. Um, in this country or, or around the world? And on the positive side, I think around the world there's been a, a decrease in the, yes. in the general level of stigma attached to, to HIV uh, status. But at the same time, you have to break that down amongst in, in different countries, different regions, and then amongst different populations within those countries. And I think that one thing that's worrisome in the case of the Philippines is that because we're seeing an increase in, in incidents with men who have unprotected sex with other men, right. is that it suggests that perhaps there is still some stigma. They're, they're reluctant to be tested. They don't have the information they need to be tested. Um, or there's a worry that perhaps they doing that, undertaking that kind of test, or uh, the counseling that might go along with that is not necessarily uh, private and confidential. And that's cr that privacy and confidentiality is critically important so people feel comfortable g under doing and you know, partaking what is what actually is available. Right. Well, one of the other reports that came out was looking at the roles, technology, um, social media, mm. and how that could actually have increased um, the, num the amount of sex men, unprotected sexes. Is that something that, that you've seen? Well, there's, there is, uh, yes, there, social media can, I think, plays, 
can play an important role in information, in making sure that information is available. Right. But there have been some studies that do indicate that it is a vehicle for men who wish to have unprotected sex with under, other men yeah. identifying each other. So that doesn't mean we would never advocate for any kind of, 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 uh, of response that, that tries to quash that. Yes. But we do have to be aware of what the, what the trends are right. and what, what the vehicles and instruments are for, that are affecting uh, this, this trends we're seeing with, with infection. So Some of it was alarming when I read it because it, the survey said that um, some talked about having sex with as many as 500 partners in a year that, who they found on social media and that an average um, ma man looking for sex on, on social media could have as many as 80 to 85 partners. Uh, if it's something like that, education needs to come in. Uh, a lot more aggressively, yes. uh, is that something that has been factored into to what's going on? Yes, certainly, and this is indeed part of the of the of the project that we're working on in, in the country. But also, I think in part, we're we're only one partner that's yes. that's working on this, and there are many others. Um, I mentioned the World Bank, I mentioned UNAIDS, but of course, uh, partners that we have in in this in this area, the Philippines has. Um, include UNICEF, include uh, WHO, um, many bilateral donors, uh, other countries are working on this issue. Uh, we're working together with, with a number of those par partners on, uh, on a, a, a website called uh, w AIDS Data Hub, which is www.aidsdatahub.org, which has a lot of information um, about what the trends are, a lot of data, a lot of very, very good information that can help inform people. But we need to use social media to help you know, deliver that message, um, to get that information out, but also be used, make sure that we're aware of how social media is being used to perhaps you know, increase transmission or risk of transmission. Is there a culture of condom use in a country like the Philippines? Well, I think it, 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 a lot of that depends on, on, on where people are and, uh, and what information they have available to them. Um, certainly there are cultural issues that, that come into play in, in any country, mm -hmm. but there are economic issues that come into play as well. And, you know, of course we do see uh, relationships between economic growth and, 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 and use, of, of use of condoms and, and other types of, of protection mm -hmm. in, many, in many, many countries. And so I think the Philippines, of course, would not be different in that way. But there are a lot of other cultural and political issues that come into play, obviously now, um, the RH with, with, with regard to that. And, uh, and I wouldn't in any way suggest that, that, that the ongoing discussions um, in Congress are related to, to, to HIV, you know, prevalence of HIV in the country at all, um, but certainly that's part of the conversation that needs to be had. Some of the ADB projects, it, it seems like um, there are in areas where there's also infrastructure projects, mm -hmm. right? Uh, is there a correlation or is that just something that's organizational? No, that's, uh, I mean, there is definitely a, a, a relationship between um, uh, infrastructure, large infrastructure projects that have or often have many migrant workers or, 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 or migrant populations that will move with these infrastructure projects. And of course, with that comes the availability of commercial sex um, and, and other things. And in fact, in the, in the late 90s, uh, there was work done by ASEAN mm -hmm. that was recommending that, that in any large infrastructure project, there had to be a component on, yes. on HIV AIDS uh, prevention attached to those large infrastructure projects because there was concern that these were major vehicles for transmission. But also cross-border areas yes. in some of these countries are, are areas that can become hotspots for any kind of communicative disease because of because of issues of, of migratory populations, because of sort of loose governance or uncertain governance. Um, so these are all things that we have focused on because we feel that number one, because of our engagement with infrastructure, because of our engagement in, in regional cooperation, yeah. uh, that this is where we can provide a value add. You mentioned nine countries. What do these nine countries have in common? The nine countries that are bucking the global trend and incidence of HIV are increasing. Well, I mean, there's a lot of different factors that yeah. come into play, and uh, and so I don't think I, I think it's you know again it's a question of of the information that's available and okay. making sure that uh, that 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 the kinds of of uh, the kind of information that's available, the kinds of approaches that have been employed successfully in many <laughs> countries are used. But the other thing that's critically important is that each country needs to know its epidemic. Um, the risk of not understanding in great detail what are the drivers of, of the epidemic in your own yeah. country 
will meet, make the, will make policymakers apply more generic types of solutions, which may not address the, the core itself. problem. Right. Um, so if you look at you know you look at a very successful program in Bangalore, India, relatively recently, they were managed to reduce incidents among commercial sex workers from 22 percent to five percent in three years. But that was a very, very targeted yes. uh, intervention. They knew exactly what the what the risk populations were. They knew exactly what the what the problem was, and they they went at that problem rather than sort of generalized information campaigns or generalized approaches. Right. Your prognosis for the Philippines moving forward? I think that uh, you know our every indication that we have uh, from our from our colleagues and, and and people we're working with the Department of Health is that they're taking this very, very seriously. Um, that they understand the, the need for data, they understand the need for targeted approaches, and they understand that this is something that's absolutely critical for the country. And so we're very encouraged by the response that we've seen from our colleagues and look forward to working with them. Wonderful. Thank you. We've been Steve, uh, speaking with Steve Groff. He is the Vice President of Asian Development Bank. I'm Maria Ressa. Thank you for joining us.